I appeared on an abandoned tower and the first zombies were already approaching me. I just started to survive guys and the zombies are flying from all sides. Look at this. I don't really like this anymore and there's, there's even a pigeon standing here. What? There were only clouds around my tower. Having dealt with the first group of zombies, I began to look around. Nice, I also managed to get the loot. Now, let's finally look around where we are and where we ended up. The first thing I see is a pigeon, look. And the drawing, as I understand it, is a pigeon with some seeds. There's also a cabinet like this, and look, there's a bottle of water and a bandage. Some kind of table, a chair, and a radio. A camera that seems to be watching me, and I don't really know why it's here. And also, guys, it's really, really high up here. There's absolutely no wood on this tower, which meant that now I couldn't make a workbench. Same as tools, and a million other crafts. The only clue that was here is a cutter on the wall where a seed along with a bird is drawn. So the first thing I try to do is to get a seed from the grass. But as you understood, I didn't get anything. And here I can climb up there. Before the zombies came again, I collected a couple of blocks of dirt and towered up to the roof of my tower. Oh, there's a chest here, nice. A bat, canned fruit and four strings. Great. On the second day, the zombies visited me again. Only this time, I already had a bat. Okay, guys, wait, there's zombies here and even small ones. But this time, I have a bat and I'll be more dangerous, more dangerous. 1 HP, guys, 1 HP, I need to eat quickly. At the top, there's only a spire. If I want to find something, then maybe we have to go down. Especially considering that I see the exact same roof down there. The only question is, how are we going to go down? I had to go down carefully, but I didn't have wood to make a ladder. So I found an alternative option. It's the vines that were on my floor. But as you understand, there's no way to collect them by hand. Therefore, I had to make shears. This is where two iron come in handy, which I'll be trying to get out the zombies in the coming days. So guys, I don't know, but according to my observations, about 10 zombies come here every day. And the whole point of these 100 days is that the more we survive, the more zombies will come to us every day. How does this happen, guys? Like... This is how they gradually come to me. And as I understand it, they're coming from the very bottom. But I don't know what's in the fog. Yes, what was below was a huge secret for me. But take my word for it. If our survival goes well, we'll even be able to go down there. Only on day 5, I was able to get my first iron ingot. And by the way, I also got a carrot. Surprisingly, the second piece of iron didn't take that long to drop. And it dropped at night of the same day. Okay, guys, that's it. I got another piece of iron. I'm just... I'm so tired of killing these zombies. Zombies. On day 6, I made the shears and got all the vines that I could find. I collected all the vines, I only have 13 of them, but I don't think it'll be enough to get down there. So now I'm just gonna place it really carefully and the main thing is not to fall. Okay guys, I just need to place it super carefully and that's the maximum I could do. So I think now I'll have to wait till the vine completely grows to the very bottom. While the vines were growing, I continued to destroy the monsters that climbed up to me. But on day 8, I was ready to go down my grown vines. Guys, we're finally going down. And I think we're on a roof. And yeah, I see something there. I heard a bunch of zombies below me, so I decided to heal to full HP. And I'll just jump straight to the zombie carefully. And where are they? Okay, one is here and one fell down. That's even easier. So look, this is where we appeared and that's where we are right now. Oh, first chest, guys. Look, a gun. Nice, we have a gun now. It'll do just fine against the zombies. We have some sort of dark cobblestone here and a message. High strength cobblestone. Wait, cobblestone can be high strength? I didn't know a lot about minecraft then and look there's there's something shining through i see a step there most likely there's some kind of ladder and i can't break this cobblestone guys there was also a nightstand on this floor where i found two string but most importantly there was grass growing here and i hope to get wheat seeds out of it please yes yes i got a seed i really hope we can tame the pigeon now i also collected some dirt and went to my spawn location it's sunset and i'm gonna try to tame this pigeon right now i think that all we need to do is throw this seed right under its feet let's try it oh the, the pigeon sat down wait what where wh wh where is he going what what is this guys i think this pigeon deceived me day nine from the very morning the zombies simply infuriated me in the near future we'll need to make some kind of protection from them otherwise our survival will not last long however there was also some good news you won't believe it but the pigeon came back and not empty-handed a pigeon with hands uh, uh, not empty winged oh Wait a minute! 
the pigeon came back. What is this? It's a piece of paper? Wait, I tamed a pigeon and it brought me an item. This is a very unusual interaction to be honest. And look, literally just three minutes passed and the pigeon flew away again. Who would have thought that in this survival in a limited space where there's only zombies everywhere, a bird will be our salvation, which will bring us items with which we can survive. While I'm sitting here waiting for the pigeon, there's quite a lot of monsters here. Okay, zombies, 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 there's a lot of zombies. Come on, reload, faster. That's it, I'm out of ammo. Why do I always constantly hear the sounds of zombies? If you hear them too, they're trying to get me somehow. On day 10, the pigeon returned and brought me the most important thing I needed. Look, he threw me oak logs. What? What is this? Okay, we can finally make a workbench. Guys, our first workbench, finally. I'll just proudly put it here. Well done, pigeon. I need to give you a name. Uh, you'll be Peter. I think Peter suits him perfectly. Of course, guys, the first thing we'll do is make sticks. I could make a bow, by the way, but I don't have any arrows. I don't really know what tools to craft because they're all little of use. I didn't see any cobblestone or any stone anywhere. As you might have already understood, today's survival is all about limited resources and survival in these conditions inside a zombie apocalypse. The first thing I decided to craft at the workbench was a wooden pickaxe to try to break the high strength cobblestone on the lower floor. I think that will make a wooden pickaxe and try to break that cobblestone. Maybe at least we can do it with a wooden pickaxe. My expectations were not met. This cobblestone cannot be broken with a wooden pick. But I will take this table and the chair. Afterwards, I began to return home, and a very big surprise awaited me. Did you just bring me... A bucket of water? The weather also cleared up, and I think it's time to make a farm. Guys, I can't really brag about much, because I only have a carrot, and that's about it. Done. I'll just enjoy this carrot, J just like that. Guys, quite a lot of days have passed. I already managed to plant this second carrot. And most importantly, in this chest, there are all these items that the pigeon brought me over the past few days. Namely, two wheat seeds, an oak sapling, a lava bucket, an egg, coal, sticks, and again some oak logs. Thanks to these valuable resources, I was finally able to make a cobblestone generator. Now, the game was supposed to go like clockwork. Also guys, we have coal. And dude, I love this pigeon. And now, we lit up the place a bit better. And of course, we're finally removing this annoying camera, which is here just watching me. It's always just watching me for no reason. While I was trying to get a stack of cobblestone, the zombies were annoying me just as usual. On some of the first days of survival, I just had to wait. For example, until the vines grew or a pigeon brought me something useful. But now I was finally busy with something. So I made myself a furnace and I thought this was quite an achievement in this survival. Day 14 began with a thunderstorm. Lightning raged everywhere. This made me think that it was time to make a full-fledged house out of this floor, in which I'll be as comfortable as ever. I'm gonna build up all the walls and patch up all the missing blocks. I'll also make a normal balcony so that, you know, I can go back down and up. We also have a lot of cobblestone and I think I'll disassemble the tower a little bit so let's get started on day 14 i decided to make a farm on the balcony and our house was already pretty much ready during these days the pigeon managed to bring me many new resources two dried fish three feathers and four spruce stairs so guys i have guests here and there's quite a lot of them a lot oh guys do hp do hp have hp guys carefully i'll just put the block we need to defend ourselves a little bit we just need to defend a bit what is this why are there so many of them one hp one hp guys wait no, 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 no! Okay, calm down, calm down, okay. All right, it's fine, we survived. All right, guys, that was hard. We don't have barbed wire yet in this survival, and I don't know if there's any at all. So I'll just be on high alert. Moreover, the number of rising zombies has increased, both visually from the side and when they attack me. Day 17, I kept wondering how I can open the hatch on the lower floor. The blocks around it didn't break and it was impossible to dig under it in any way. I thought that I could solve this problem thanks to an iron pickaxe, but I only had one iron and needed two more. I spent three whole days on this. In some way, I was lucky that more zombies were spawning now and I had a lot of stone swords. Guys, we're finally crafting an iron pickaxe let's go i really hope my plan works the cool thing about the survival is that there's no clues around me no notes no signs no text in chat nothing only by trial and error i could go through the survival on my own meanwhile the number of zombies increased every day day 21 i completely forgot that i had my own sapling in the box which petya brought to me so today i was gonna make my own oak farm so far 
far we only have one sapling, but believe me, soon there will be many more. Just grow. Day 22. The pigeon was gone all day yesterday. I already thought that this option was gone for me, and I would have to continue to survive on my own. But today he returned and brought a very important item. It was gunpowder. But you might ask, why is it so important? Because it's this item that reminded me of how I can break this high strength cobblestone. Wait, I can make TNT. Okay, I need at least four more gunpowder and sand. The main problem is sand. For gunpowder, I'm gonna make a mob grinder on the lower floor, which won't be very difficult. But there's nowhere to get sand. But what if I told you that we don't even need it at all? The initial idea was the following. We get gunpowder from the farm, take sand from somewhere, and we're done. But then I realized, why do we need TNT if creepers can spawn here? Then they might be able to destroy this very cobblestone. Of course, if that's possible. But this was only a theory. It was difficult to imagine what properties this high-strength cobblestone stone had. On day 23, with the help of more cobblestone, I completely walled up this room and went to my home. And for the mobs to spawn, I had to move a pretty good distance away. Okay guys, we waited a little bit and I think it's worth going downstairs and taking a look. Oh great, there's a creeper, nice. Having dealt with the skeletons, I tried to activate the creeper. You won't believe it, but it worked. I was able to remove some part of the cobblestone, and the one that remained turned into a regular one. Look, there's a spiral staircase here. Who would have thought? I guess tomorrow we'll go down inside the tower. I don't know where the staircase leads, but it's definitely something new in our survival. Bed and nightstand, okay. Pistol, 10 ammo, and a book and quill. My name is Joe. My task is to observe the premises and be able to stop the experiment if anything happens. Honestly, I don't know how I agreed to take this job. Apparently, I'm the subject of the experiment. The stairs continue to lead down, and the further I went, the more plot I got. Sweet berry cookies, a new gun, and 10 ammo, nice. Start of research. We have some kind of plot going on now. This is pretty interesting. The purpose of the experiment is to find out what a person will do if left in a limited space with a limited amount of resources. The plot is basically clear, guys. It turns out I'm the subject that was placed on this tower to monitor and investigate me. The only question is how the zombies appeared here. Oh, wow, look. I think there's a lot of things down there that can be explored. In the following note, I found the answer to my question. Zombies appeared by chance and were not planned by the experiment. This survival is now full of plot, and this made the game even more interesting. I never stopped going down, I wanted to know everything about where I ended up. I see another note. Well, I could have gone down a little more carefully, but we're down, so let's take a look around. First, a box, bones, bandages, and a slime ball. Again, some kind of walled up door with the stairs. A note with question marks, and a note with the message what happened. Let's start by reading this one. And admit it, honestly, is the pigeon also a fake? The tower was chosen perfectly. We equipped it with cameras and motion sensors to monitor the subject. The only thing that worries us is the looming virus that- What? What? In short, everything is according to the law of the zombie apocalypse genre. Someone had some kind of plan, then a virus comes, and the whole plan goes down the drain. To go down, a coded door awaited me again. I only had to answer one question. How many zombie apocalypse survivals do I have on my channel? Since I'm not quite an old hag yet and I have a pretty good memory, I remembered that I had five of them. The door then simply opened and I went downstairs. Entrance for employees only and another note, access code. How many years ago was the channel Zeman created? This I can easily answer, so it must be a full 10 years. A well, maybe 11. I, it's the same thing, plus or minus. A bottle of water, first aid kits, computers, more computers. So I think they're just sitting here and watching me. Trying to go down even lower, I saw a block of bedrock. And when I tried to break the walls, the floor, or even the ceiling, I realized that these objects could not be moved in any way. And before the zombies eat me, I decided to go back home. Day 25. The pigeon brought me new items. It was an ordinary bow and a golden shovel. From today, I was gonna make my house more beautiful beautiful, because so far it looked quite strange. I know that in my survivals you really love the construction sections, so let's devote a little more time to it. Firstly, we grew a tree. Five blocks of wood, guys. I think I'll make some oak slabs. They'll add comfort and fit very well to the interior. Look, my idea is simply fantastic. Instead of explaining it, I'll just start doing it and you'll see what the point is. The architectural idea took me three days to make. I simply removed some elements in the house and rebuilt some. I wanted to create something unusual, so 
so that it wouldn't look like any other house from any of my survivals. I decided to take the usual diagonal as a basis. This is probably what the house will look like. You can build such a house anywhere. On a tree, underwater, on a mountain. In any case, it'll look pretty interesting. And most importantly, quite symmetrical. It turned out to be a pretty interesting base, which of course looked quite strange on a forgotten zombie tower, but you must admit, it's pretty beautiful. Everything is ready, guys. Look, we have a storage unit here, and on this side we have a kitchen, along with some furnaces. The carrot farm is still in its same place, only looks a bit better. And on the other side of the base, we have an oak farm, which I also changed a little bit. Day 29 began with a zombie simply breaking through my floor. I don't remember if I said it or not, but zombies can break blocks here. Otherwise, it'd be a bit too easy. While I was improving the base, a pigeon brought me sand and sugarcane. I turned the sand straight into glass, but the sugarcane was really important, because I wanted to build one very cool project in this survival. I want to make a library that I'll call Above the Clouds. This requires a lot of bookshelves. So first, I decided to make a sugarcane farm. On day 30, I made the second floor of my oak farm. And on day 31, I made the second floor of my carrot farm. And first of all, the oak farm let me make way more charcoal. On day 33, 34, and 35, I mined a huge amount of cobblestone. And then I melted it down on those same days. Later, I was almost killed by the zombies. And there's quite a lot of them coming nowadays. This is just insane. I have no idea how I can defend from these zombies. On day 36, I finally made enough bricks. So I could finally start making the frame of my library. So, I thought about it and decided that I'll make the library between the mob grinder that we have downstairs and between my house. So, let's start building the frame. On day 37, the frame was ready, but we didn't have the books or the bookshelves themselves. So, on day 38, I began to expand the sugarcane farm. On day 39, a thunderstorm began, but sadly, it didn't just pass by. Lightning struck our library and destroyed absolutely all the wooden blocks, thereby destroying 70% of our library. No! Oh guys, how did this happen? I didn't even have time to put the fire out. I was very upset and annoyed, considering that every block in this survival is really valuable. I sent a question to my team, can I do something about this? And to their credit, they gave me a hint by writing just one word, spire. I guess we have to go up there now. At the very top, there was a sign that said location for a lightning rod. Having found this craft, I realized that I needed to make this before continuing to build the library. I don't know if this will make you happy or not, but the craft is pretty difficult. Three iron ingots, one redstone dust, and two cobblestone was needed. Everything would be fine. I even had one redstone dust that a pigeon brought me. But the three iron ingots. Something's telling me that I'm gonna have to farm for a while, because I wouldn't rely on the pigeon. For five whole days, I was farming iron. In addition to the zombies that were climbing up, I now also had a mob farm where the zombies were also spawning. On day 46, I finally crafted a lightning rod, and I was really happy about it. Guys, Guys, here it is. I'm just so happy. That's it guys. We'll check it out in action when the next thunderstorm appears again. On day 47, I restored the library. As you know, the bookshelves also require leather, but there's no cows on this tower. I predicted this, and using a furnace, I melted all the rotten flesh into leather. So guys, let's put our stack in. Half of it will go to the bookshelves, and the other one will go to our armor. And by day 48, I collected the rest of the sugarcane and made all the bookshelves that I needed. Well guys, look, this is our library. It looks just amazing. If I had ink, I would write a couple of cool books about my survival adventures, but I don't have any, so that's it for now. On day 49, I made a fishing rod to catch as many fish as possible. You know, extra food never hurts. Day 50. Exactly half of our survival has passed. We already developed quite well, but actually, the most interesting parts were way ahead of us. What? Guys, look! The fog has cleared! I can see the ground! Now, it was clear that the tower was still on the ground. For this survival, it was a legendary discovery. Now, I really wanted to go down, but we must remember that a huge number of zombies were waiting for us down below. To go down, I had to prepare really well. The first thing I did was I made a lot of ropes. You'll see them in action. This is the most useful item in this survival. I also made a bow and arrow because I was running low on ammo. Well, guys, look at this. I actually thought that we were a lot higher, but it turns out that here's the cloud and just here's the land. 
So let's go down. To do that, I have these ropes. You can go down really easily. We'll just hang another one and continue our descent. Going lower down, I finally began to see some zombies. They clumsily tried to get me. All right, guys, I already see how many zombies there are here. With one zombies on the roof. Okay, let's just jump through trees. Look at how many of them there are. Oh my god. Wait, they're breaking the leaves. They're breaking the leaves. Okay, there's a house here. Nice. Let's try to get inside now. All right, I'm in the attic. Some of the zombies got lost, but some still made their way into the house. It's good that I was able to deal with these zombies. Well, I didn't get out of this house anymore and waited until the next day came. Today we'll continue to survive. I was able to hide from the zombies in this house. And on this occasion, I'll just have a snack. Look at that fog. Uh, let's take this hay. I can make a lot of bread out of it. Strange thoughts, we'll read them now. And here we have a safe, a first aid kit, a shotgun, and 36 rounds of ammo. Now this I understand, guys. With this, I can carefully escape from the zombies. He dropped an iron ingot. Let's read the note now. This tower was erected in our wilderness very spontaneously. They didn't even ask us. They didn't tell us anything. What are they planning to do there? Why is it even here? Obviously not for communication, because there's still no signal and you can't see people in it. What is it? So here's the stories about this tower, guys. As I understand it, it's from the residents of this house. Well, let's see what's out on the street. And yeah, look, here's the outline of our tower. Okay, there's no one here. Guys, the zombies are attacking us right now and the shotgun is pretty good. Bandages, hot chocolate, and iron. It's good that there's iron here. Honey cookies, so let's take it all. My inventory is full, so I think it's time to go back to our tower. Wait, there's no way this is a cave. I think we'll go there another day, and there's no room in my inventory anyway, so let's go back home. That's it, guys. Let's get out of here as soon as possible. This is crazy. When I returned home, I was shocked by the number of resources I managed to bring. All day today, I was sorting the resources. Those that I brought and those that were here before. In the coming days, I improved my house a little bit. The pigeon also brought me some sand, so I finally made glass. Also guys, look, now I have cocoa beans, all thanks to Betya, so I'll plant them right now. I also spent one of my days in the mob grinder. I collected a fairly large amount of bones and string. I'll turn all of these bones into bone meal. It'll be pretty useful for us in the future because I'm planning to make a wheat farm, so let's put it off for future times. Of course, I felt safe on the zombie tower. We already made a huge house, and you know what? I didn't really want to settle down among the zombies and the trees. So I thought that I would continue to live on my tower and from time to time go down for resources. And then I decided to go down again on day 60. Well friends, it's time to go down again. This time I plan to loot at least one mine. These ropes that I crafted from string are actually really convenient. You can go down with them in any way you like. Zombie, come on, go climb some other house, not my tower. Look, they're already right here. So far, I haven't seen any of them climbing the ropes. Well, maybe that's a good thing. Okay, I'm down, great. This time, there aren't that many zombies here, but... Oh, wait, actually, there's a few. Okay, okay, I don't have much ammo. It's better not to waste it. Uh, so let's run along this path, guys. As I understood, the map here was not too big, and soon, I reached some kind of bunker. Look, there's some kind of bunker here. Oh, zombies, oh, 3 HP, 3 HP, 3 HP. I didn't take enough food with me. I hope I can find some here. Diary, okay, another note. Day one. The zombies arrived so unexpectedly. This shelter should last for a while, but the supplies won't last long. I need to get into the tower, it looks safe. There are even more zombies, it seems there's no chance of reaching the tower. I had a weapon somewhere in the house, I have to get it. So I'm guessing that the zombies are also here. Look, there's iron, that's good. Bottles of water, well, pretty much normal resources. I won't complain, but it's time to go back. We still have to loot that cave. There weren't many zombies around the cave, so I took advantage of the moment and went to get resources. It can't be guys, right now I'm mining real coal, finally. Let's drink some water. By the way, water also restores HP a little bit. And I see zombies up there. Whoa guys, look! Oh my god, there's so much iron here. Oh, more zombies. It's better not to stand here with your back turned, as you understand. We'll make ourselves full iron armor, guys, finally! I just need to be more careful with the zombies because they're all running around me. After all, we came here for a reason. It's just, there's so many resources here. Okay, the last iron vein, guys, 
we'll take it and go back home. 23 iron, guys. Almost enough for a full set of armor. All right, all right. Okay, guys, let's just leave. Minus one. Okay, zombies, zombies. Calm down, zombies. Okay, uh, let's get out of here as soon as possible. Run, 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 run. Come on. All right, that's it. Let's get out of here as quickly as possible. Oh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just gonna keep going. On day 61, a very strong wind started. I understood this only from the sounds that came from my headphone because visually everything seemed to be normal. Whatever that sound was, it was kind of scary. And of course, I'm sure that you want to know a more detailed story. What happened to those who watched me and in general how it all happened. Since there were a few blocks of bedrock inside the tower, I decided to go down and try to find the entrance to it because most likely it was there. Otherwise, how did people even get in there? Okay, friends, I'm going down to my zombies. Today, we're going to find the entrance to this very tower, especially from below. Perhaps in this way, we'll be able to climb up without using these ropes. We don't have much ammo, so let's not waste time. Oh, guys, look! One more cave! Nice! Okay, let's remember it. Experiment 1,136,000? Hey, zombies, stop bothering me. I found some clues here. Okay, there's even an arrow that's pointing to the door. That's it, guys. There's no other door around. Let's carefully go inside then. Look, first of all, there's a bonsai here, this small tree, there's also a skeleton and two chests. Some canned food, basically the regular loot, and most importantly, book and quill. Another experiment of the company Zeem Incorporated. W what? What do you mean? But this experiment is special, because today the creator of the company himself is taking part in it. What will come of this and whether he'll remember anything remains a mystery. Guys, now this is a plot twist. So I guess I'm the founder of this company and I was dragged here into an experiment? Okay, the further we go, the more interesting it'll become. So our friends are here, more zombies, zombies, zombies. So there is a TV with a sofa where you can watch my videos, some kind of computer, a lamp, a fire extinguisher just in case, boxes, and another note. And look, activation of the second part of the plot? First, let's read the note. It's just awful. It turns out it was a hoax. Zeman didn't ask for the experiment. He was set up. This is our new boss, Igor. Now he owns the company. And Zeman will have to survive on the tower and apparently indefinitely. What? Guys, I think I was set up. Why is this story written about something that I don't even know about myself? Wow, this story is picking up speed. It's amazing how we found two new notes and we already have a proposal to activate the second part of the plot. First, let's look at these boxes. There's iron, ammo, sticks, and all sorts of nonsense. Well, there's no other options, guys. I'm really curious what happens next, so let's activate the second part of the plot. The button lit up. Wait, guys, there's sounds of zombies outside or they just spawned and it was a trap. Oh my god, guys, it's night now. Look at how many zombies there are. Let's run. Okay, Okay, let's run. Oh my god. We really need to escape right now. Oh my god, guys. I was able to escape. This is just insane. D63 began as if nothing had happened. I calmly replenished my cobblestone reserves thanks to my generator and did household chores, such as making a couple of paintings and hanging them around the house. But D64 really scared me. The first message in the entirety of these 100 days appeared in chat. Hello, Zeman. Do you remember me? I have to help you. You'll get out of here. All you need to do is craft an antenna. You could look at the craft in the recipe book. Place it at the very top of the tower and I'll try to send a helicopter. Whoa, guys, what is going on? I initially thought this was an ordinary skyblock on a tower with zombies. But guys, it seems that we have acquired a plot and some kind of goal. All that remains is to see how this very antenna is crafted. Oh my. The recipe turned out to be much more difficult than I thought. This antenna required a lot of gunpowder, as well as gold and redstone. In principle, I can get gold and redstone in the caves below, and I can actually also get the gunpowder on my monster farm. But how long will it all take? Besides this, there was a downside to everything. By activating the second part of the plot, I doubled the spawn of zombies. Now on some days, I could barely defend from them. So guys, a lot of them are coming up right now, a lot of them. Come on, carefully, carefully. No, wait, wait, no, 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 no. After that incident, I decided to make some barbed wire. I didn't have any iron, so after spending some several hours in the cave, I was finally able to defend my base even better. Well, guys, look, I hope this will help. In any case, it'll deal a lot of damage to the zombies. I spent the next few days on my monster farm. I had to make a lot of gunpowder for the blocks from which the antenna is made, and I farmed gunpowder until day 75. It took so long because creepers spawn very rarely, much
much less often than skeletons or spiders. Now what? Now let's go to the cave and look for gold. As you can imagine, there were way more zombies, and trying to survive down below is way more difficult, especially considering that I practically had no ammo. That's why I mainly use barbed wire, it can always help with a huge number of zombies. This time friends, we'll have to visit a fairly deep cave. Well, what options do we have? Let's go. Having explored through two caves, I didn't find any gold, so I had to dig around blindly. Basically, gold and redstone aren't such rare items as diamonds, so I only spent two days on this. And by the way, I also found some diamonds. We found diamonds, guys! On day 79, I finally made the antenna. Guys, it's just, it turned out to be way more difficult than anything. It just took so long and I was just farming. But we already have it, so let's put it down. Ready. As soon as I placed it, a new message appeared in chat. Zeman, we were able to track your location. Unfortunately, it was difficult to determine in which of the thousands of towers you are in. Yes, it is not the only one here. We're sending a helicopter to you. No matter what day you're currently surviving on, it will arrive only by day 100. Try to hold out until then. Well, great guys, the plot is just awesome, but, but waiting for day 100? This is terrible. And more zombies will spawn. I don't know if I'll survive here for another 20 days. I had no options. The next day, the first thing I decided to do was to go back to the cave. This time with a bucket of water to get some obsidian. I think that you've already guessed why I need obsidian. Obsidian. Exactly, to make an enchanting table. I think that it'll fit perfectly into our library so that the knowledge gained from the books can be applied in practice. Besides that, I also got some lapis. My mission for today is complete, let's go back home. On day 82, the pigeon brought me a couple of eggs, and you won't believe it, I hatched the chicken. But I decided not to give it a name, it's just gonna be a chicken. Guys, now I have the most unusual pet you can imagine, just the chicken. The only thing missing in my house was a proper bedroom, and I thought it was time to make one. My idea is that I'll make a small room right above everything, above the tree farm and almost at the very top, it's gonna be my bedroom. We basically have all the resources for this, so let's go! I built everything in just 5 days. Of course, along the way I was collecting sugarcane from the farm, carrots and wood, but I also enchanted a couple of items to check if maybe I missed some location. It was this wooden tower. Against the background of my tower, it was just tiny. Let's see what we have here besides zombies. Hot chocolate, first aid kits, and a new gun! Look! Nice! It even came with the scope by the way. And there's also enough ammo. I should have come here right away to loot it. I'm having trouble with iron armor since I haven't even crafted it. At first we had barbed wire, then some other things, and in the end I only got around to do it now. So I mined iron in the cave until day 90, and then I finally made it. Now guys, I feel pretty protected because there was no such effect in leather armor. From day 90 to day 95 I collected gunpowder. Because I understood how to craft ammo, I assumed that most likely by the the end of our survival there will be just a lot of zombies and there will be some kind of epic battle. But let's be honest, when has my survival been different? If my team does some other thing, uh, no, it won't. I'm sure there's gonna be a battle. There were still a few days left. I just had to hold out until day 100. Assuming that the zombies would try to get to me, I made several rings of cobblestone throughout the tower and hoped that this would at least somehow stop them. But as you might guess, everything was not so easy. Day 99. Today, the zombies definitely wanted to get me because the number of spawns increased significantly. Okay, guys, I hear a lot of zombies and I think that this is the moment when they're gonna attack me in large numbers. So guys, okay, let's go up. We need to go up as soon as possible. Let's go up guys quick. We're just crawling friends. We're just crawling higher. I need to go up as high as possible. 1 HP guys. I have 1 HP. Alright, I'm at the very top. Just try to come up to me. Look, he's breaking the blocks. I think that's it guys. I only have 1 HP. Just look guys, this is insane. They broke everything here, but the most important thing is that we were able to repel their attack. At this point, day 99 came to an end, and then day 100 finally arrived, where the helicopter approached me from afar. So I survived the zombie apocalypse on this tower for 100 days, and I continued my journey on the helicopter. Thanks for watching this video guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and also watch my other videos. Bye bye!